This is Plant-Based Briefing. Does backyard beekeeping help bees? Here's what you should know from PETA.org. And I'm Marian Erickson, host of this curated content plant-based podcast. I get permission to narrate a variety of articles on plant-based and vegan topics in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. Today's article is from PETA.org, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. They were founded in 1980, and they're the largest animal rights organization in the world. They believe that animals have rights and deserve to have their best interests taken into consideration, regardless of whether they are useful to humans. Like you, animals are capable of suffering and have an interest in leading their own lives. PETA opposes speciesism, which is a human supremacist worldview, and PETA focuses its attention on the four areas in which the largest numbers of animals suffer the most intensely for the longest periods of time, in laboratories, in the food industry, in the clothing trade, and in the entertainment business. They also work on a variety of other issues, including the cruel killing of rodents, birds, and other animals who are often considered pests, as well as cruelty to domesticated animals. They work through public education, investigative news gathering and reporting, research, animal rescue, legislation, special events, celebrity involvement, and protest campaigns. And one argument animal eaters will often throw up as soon as they hear anything from PETA is PETA kills, PETA kills animals in their shelters. If you've heard that and want to know how to respond, check out episode 395, Does PETA Kill Animals? And I'll link that in the show notes as well. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. Does backyard beekeeping help bees? Here's what you should know from PETA.org. Backyard beekeeping has been in the news in recent years, but saving the bees doesn't mean breeding honeybees and stealing their honey. Much of the backyard beekeeping industry is rooted in speciesism, even as it claims to support these animals, because it assumes that we have a right to steal honey, beeswax, and honeycomb from bees who work hard to produce it for themselves. If you're thinking about getting into backyard beekeeping, here are some things you should know. Backyard beekeeping doesn't quote-unquote save the bees. When scientists talk about saving the bees, they aren't talking about the species most backyard beekeepers exploit. The most common species used for backyard beekeeping is the European honeybee, a non-native, domesticated species imported to North America to be used in agriculture. These colonies compete for resources with native bees, who are actually much better pollinators and are the ones facing extinction, and other insects. While honeybees are more interested in nectar, native species actively collect pollen— They're also much better at pollinating native plants, which supports overall biodiversity and ecosystem health. The best thing you can do to help bees is to support struggling native species by making your yard a haven full of bee-friendly native plants and bee houses. Mason, leafcutter, and minor bees are just a few of the species you might spot, but there are more than 4,000 types native to the U.S. Other Issues with Backyard Beekeeping Many backyard colonies die because people don't realize just how much work and responsibility are involved in keeping a thriving hive. Honeybee colonies are highly susceptible to disease, poor nutrition, and parasites. Varroa mites can infect colonies where they feed and live on larvae, pupa, and even adult honeybees, which can eventually lead to the spread of diseases and viruses, colony collapse, and death. Novice beekeepers might not have the knowledge, funds, or experience to manage infestations, which can also spread to nearby hives. Taking bees' honey, comb, and beeswax is inherently speciesist. Bees produce honey and build comb from beeswax in order to nourish themselves and support their hives. Stealing their hard work is inherently speciesist. Their honey belongs to them, not us. Many people take up backyard beekeeping in order to have their own source of honey while claiming to support bee populations— but most native species either don't produce honey or don't produce enough for humans to collect. If you really care about the well-being of these friendly pollinators, leaving them alone and simply turning your yard into a bee-friendly place are the best things you can do for them. What to do if you're already beekeeping in your backyard? If you're already caring for bees in your backyard, be sure you're well-versed in the proper care techniques so you can protect them from disease, varroa mites, and other harm. Don't be speciesist. Stop stealing from bees for your own gain. Do more to help bees. There are plenty of delicious sweeteners you can use instead of honey, including agave nectar and maple syrup. Be sure to buy beeswax-free cosmetics and soy-based candles for your home. 
Finally, support the local bee population by planting pollinator-friendly native plants, putting bee homes or hotels in your yard, and avoiding the use of pesticides. You just listened to Does Backyard Beekeeping Help Bees? Here's what you should know from PETA.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson. Check out yesterday's episode if you want more information, and there's a couple previous ones I mentioned there as well that you can link back to. And there are lots of vegan honey products available now. There's a company in South Carolina that makes one near me called It's Unhoney, and it's delicious. It's dandelion-based, and it tastes surprisingly like honey, and it's pretty healthy too. And I was pleasantly surprised at the end of this article where they say, what can you do if you're already keeping bees? That's a great point for people who are already doing it, but you know, once you know better, you do better. So what can they do? I think that would be great for articles as well, for backyard chicken keepers and the like. If I find anything like that, I'll be sure to share it with you. And please share this episode with anyone who might benefit. And thanks for listening.